Tonight's theme is illumination, and my take on it is pretty literal. A good day at work for me is getting to sit in the dark and turn lights on and off. <laughs> I'm a professor of theatrical lighting design. When I tell people I'm a lighting designer, I usually get a range of similar reactions, from confusion to curiosity. Oh, wow, that's a job. <laughs> I bet everyone here has attended a play or a concert or a dance piece or some other performing arts event, yes? Have you ever stopped to really think about the lighting that went into that production? Oh, it's not good. <laughs> Most people tend not to notice the lighting, but I know that every single one of them is affected by it. So, what do lighting designers do? Sure, we illuminate the stage, but that's not all. We illuminate the storytelling. We enhance the text, the movement, the emotional content of the piece. I believe good lighting must breathe along with the actors and support the rest of the stage picture, whether that is responding to the color of a dress or the shape of the scenery or the rhythm of the music. We use technology to help us achieve this, but it's not the end goal. Designer Penny Ramson likes to say that our lighting instruments are our paintbrushes. Lighting is a bit like painting. A stroke of color on a backdrop here, a glow on an actor's face there, all contributing to the composition as a whole. Part of the magic of stage lighting is that it operates on a subconscious level. We are quietly shaping the way that you experience a scene, or the way you feel about a character, without you ever realizing it. Really, people don't often notice, not even theater critics. We lighting and sound designers don't often get a mention in reviews, <laughs> unless we make it stick. <laughs> it's true, it seems that for most people, the only time they really notice the lighting is when things go wrong. <laughs> um, oops, um, right. Uh, <clears throat> well, while we're here, um, let me tell you about one of the most important functions of lighting design, which is visibility. It is very important for us lighting designers to make sure that the action on stage is visible to the audience. Let's get the lights back on. Great. <laughs> See what I mean? I'd like to share with you a few basic lighting concepts that you can look out for in the next performance you attend, or simply observe in the artificial and natural light in your everyday life. Focus is another important function of lighting design. We help the audience know where to look on stage to help them best follow the story. It might be really obvious, as it is with this look, with a small pool of light surrounded by darkness, or it might be more subtle, as it is with this look that we've had for our tonight's speakers, with light elsewhere on stage, but subtly brighter at center to help you focus and listen in on what we're saying. In film, a cinematographer might choose to give a wide shot to establish the location and then cut to a character reaction in a close-up. In theater, we use lighting in a similar way. Mood is another important function. We can use many different lighting tools to create different moods on stage to suit the scene at hand. Maybe we have a scary scene that should feel shadowy and ominous, or maybe we have a funny scene that should feel bright and happy. We can also give pieces of information about time of day and setting and location. Just a few quick examples in an infinite number of possibilities. Modeling is another important function. Not only do we want the actors and the scenery to be visible, but we want them to look good, three-dimensional, dynamic. One way to do this is to combine multiple directions of light. If we look at just this front light alone, there's very good visibility on my face, but it can be a bit flattening. If we take a look at just side light, we have a much better sculptural effect on the body, but the visibility on my face, less so. If we put them together, front light combined with two directions of side light, we can achieve good visibility and good three-dimensional modeling. So now that we know what lighting design can do on stage, let's talk about the qualities of light that designers can manipulate to help make those things happen and better tell the story. Color tends to be the quality that people notice first. Maybe it's because we're used to seeing and naming color in our everyday lives. We can very quickly change the feel of a scene by adjusting the color. It could be in a very bold way, like with this saturated red, or it could be in a more subtle way, like with this pale blue tint. 
Intensity refers to the brightness or dimness of a particular light. Let's take a look at one light at full, 100% intensity. And let's watch that light slowly go down to about 30%. Same light, same color, but a totally different feel on stage by adjusting the intensity. Distribution refers to both the shape and the direction of light on stage. The direction light is coming from can have a big effect on how the body is modeled, whether that is from the front, or maybe from the side, or from the back, or from above, or a low side, many, many different options. We can change the shape of the beam of light by making adjustments at the instrument, or by placing a pattern in the light. Movement. Movement can be in the form of physical movement on stage, like with a follow spotlight, following an actor in a cross across the stage. Or it could be an actor carrying a lantern. It could also be an implied movement in the timing of lighting shifts. We can have a very quick shift from one look to the next, or we could have a slower shift. We can have those same looks but a very different feel just by adjusting the timing by which we go from one to the next. With all of these tools combined, we can make a really powerful impact in our storytelling on stage. Let's take a look at this image from a play that I designed. Now, what do you think might be happening in this scene? Is it funny? Is it terrifying? What are the lighting clues that are giving you that sense? Is it the intensity or the color? Or maybe it's the distribution of light and shadow. Now, imagine that there was no stage lighting at all. We would have a group of people standing around stage instead of conjuring a seance. In this example, we have a very isolated distribution of light. The focus on stage is very clear. The direction of the light from right above the actor creates some deep shadows on her face that might give you a bit of a spooky mood. In this example, we have two actors that are very well illuminated. We have a nice warm white light color. If this was a dialogue heavy scene, we should be able to see their lips move and understand what they're saying very clearly. Here we have lighting addressing both actors and scenery. Maybe you can pick up some clues about the time of day from the color of the direction, or maybe interpret a bit of a romantic mood. Lighting designers are only one of the many types of people needed to put on a successful production. It's not just the performers who happen to be the most visible, although they are very important. We also need painters, electricians, historians, wig makers, public relations people. The list goes on. I feel that part of my job as a professor is to help my students identify their strengths and find their career path. There's a place for everyone in the theater. As it is with so many of these backstage crafts, we lighting designers must set our egos aside and accept that our work will largely go unnoticed. But it's okay, because we know that if we put up a play in just the work lights, <laughs> There would be no magic. So remember, <laughs> look deeper, listen carefully, appreciate all of the people and parts that illuminate the whole. There's magic all around us. We just have to open our eyes. Thank you.